Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good time. We've got hot dogs over there, greens, all three. This is a great event that we're having. God bless Sister Leah here that prepared all this and everyone that, you know, put their part in. This is what it's all about. About right? everything we do. Hip hop, rap, testimony, whatever it is, we're doing it for Jesus. Everything revolves around Jesus. I'm going to give a 45 minute testimony in 10 minutes for what God did for me in my life. Originally from the state of California, Orange County. And out there, you know, there's just so many bad things going on. As a child, I was abused in every way that you can think of. All this abuse that was done to me as a child, I carried it inside of me. I started self-medicating myself with alcohol and every drug that you can think of. Except heroin, because I didn't like me. <laughs> but I, 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 I hid myself in games and drugs or signs where I would go to parties and I would wake up in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a house, jumping over bodies and I had no idea who it was. There were times where I couldn't overdose. Because of all the pain that was done to me as a child, abused in every single way that you can think of, which I can't get into detail now. In and out of jail all my life because I was scared to hurt the people that hurt me. Fighting on the streets because I was filled with rage and anger of what happened to me as a child. But I can thank God now for what God has done for me. That I can also preach the Word of God wherever I go and what God, I never knew that God had a plan for me. On the street, king fighting with two faces, L.A., Orange County, just hurting the people, feeling my, my body was hurt. I should, have, I should have been dead a long time ago. I tried to commit suicide three times in one of it. At one time, I remember being in my house, feeling completely unworthy, no good. I wrote a letter to my wife and my son, and I, and I grabbed the pills to overdose and I, I drank those pills with a body of bottle of tequila. <laughs> in the morning when I woke up, I didn't have any pain in my stomach, I didn't have a hangover, and I, think, I asked God, God, why am I not dead? I don't want to live anymore. I'm tired of this life. I'm angry. I'm angry at my father. I'm angry at my mother. I'm angry at everybody. The people that hurt me. Three times I tried to commit suicide. Three times I failed. I believe God had a plan for me. He has a destiny for me. The Bible says that He has chosen us before the foundation of the earth to be predestined. That means God has chosen us before the before the God, before God made this world. He already had us in His mind to become something. I fell in a mental institution because of so much drugs. I had a hand with people that did witchcraft to me for six months. I was like a vegetable. My mother and my wife and my father and my sister, they had to take care of me for six months in a house because I was like a vegetable. I was seeing spiritual things around. I had my hair down in here. I mean, I looked like Satan himself. I will show you a picture of what I looked like. The authorities, the cops, the counselors, the therapists, everybody said I was crazy. I'm here to tell you that 90% of the people that are in mental institutions, they're not crazy. They're seeing the spiritual world, and they need deliverance. They're in pain of what all the hurt has been done to them as a child. I remember I used to be spirit, ever walk on the street, and I see spiritual things, I couldn't control myself. The day I married my wife, the next day I was trying to kill my wife, because I had so many demons inside of me. To make a long story short, out in the state of Oregon is where I met God, I see God, I said, I'm tired of my life, I can't live like this. My mother took me to, to these witch doctors to get created spirits, but they all, all that they did was put more things inside of me. They tied up these spirits, but I still was full of pain and bitterness and anger. I was still grieving, trying to medicate, still medicate myself. I was still taking these drugs, because I still had that pain. 
as a child that was eating inside of me. Right. And one day I said, God, I'm tired of this. And that this man came into a pastor, came into my house. He said, I will help you. I said, I can't ever pay any money for counseling. He goes, I'm not charging you any money. You tried everything. You tried cocaine. You tried crack. You tried meth. You tried weed. You tried every type of alcohol in your life. And nothing happened. Why don't you try Jesus? And if Jesus fails you, I will never bother you again. I said, that sounds like a deal. I said, all right. I'll try Jesus. And there in the state of, there in the state of uh, Oregon, the state of Oregon, on the corner of State 17, there was a small little Pentecostal church. Me and my wife walked in there. Right away, God touched my wife, filled her with the Holy Ghost, speaking under tongues. Half hour on the floor, God is touching her. And I think to God, God, what does she have that I don't have? Why do you touch her, but you don't touch me? God says, because half of you wants to serve the world, and the other half is looking for me, but tonight you've got to make a decision. I felt something push me. I believe it was the angels of the Lord push me into the front of the church of the altar. And I felt something on top of my shoulder that put me on my on my knees. And when I hit my when I hit my knees in the floor, I started to weep. I started to cry. And I said, God, I'm tired of my life. What can you do for me if you really exist? Right up as a Catholic, I saw God so far. And I said, God, if you exist, you need to do something with me because I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to live anymore. And I stood up on my feet because I didn't feel the presence of God. When I tried to leave, half of my body was paralyzed. This side of my face was paralyzed. This arm twisted behind my back. This leg was stiff as a, as a tree trunk. My my. My ribs would open me because the demons that were inside of me were trying to destroy me. Inside of me, I was so scared. I felt like I was inside of a coffin. I was alive and nobody could hear me. I remember the, the people from the congregation, they, they pulled to the side and nobody touched me. They all feared me. But God had me right where he wanted me. He said, if you want to be delivered, you have to leave your choice now. You either serve me or you serve the world. And at that moment, I made my decision to serve God. And at that moment, I don't know how many spirits I had inside me. But I felt my body turn many times. And I hit the floor. And I ended up being baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost, delivered from the pain. Six years later, I went to my stepdad and I said, I say, Dad, I forgive you for all the things that you did to me as a child. I remember my dad's lips were trembling. And he dropped to his knees and he said, and he said, Hey, son, you can call the cops right now. I said, first of all, you need to get off your knees because I'm not God. I said, second of all, six years ago I forgave you and I'm just here to tell you that I love you. And I forgive you for all the things that you've done to me as a child. I forgave the hurt the people that did witchcraft to me. I forgave the, the people that hurt me out in the game, out, 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 out in, in the body of me, to call it. And God freed me. And I've been in this walk for 19 years. And I've been here in Franklin, Tennessee for eight years. I've been pastoring. A Spanish church for five years, the 15th of the August, we're going to have five year anniversary because of what God has done in my life, because of what God has done for somebody so ugly. I say, if God can change me, He can change anybody. And now God uses me in the area of deliverance and healing. I walk the street looking for people with cancer, I try to fit broken bones, whatever it is, and God has given me the authority by His Spirit, hallelujah, to lay hands on the sick and they recover. It's got to happen. Everything that's, that's written in the Word of God, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. So that's what we're here for. We're here to worship God and to see the great things that He can do.
But we're going to be here for a while. I don't have all the time to see my full testimony. But we're going to be over there next to the hot dogs. That's a good place. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll go by the hot dogs and that. If you need prayer, if you need deliverance, you're battling something spiritual in your home, I will go to your house and we will cast those spirits. There may be generational curses. There may be inherited curses. Whatever it, up, whatever it is, it can be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have pain in your body, no matter what it is, even if it's a knee pain, you had a knee pain over there. Raise your hand, brother. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God healed his knee. Raise your hand, sister, back right there, too. Her shoulder, how it is, she's raising that arm. She could, lift, she could not lift up that arm. But the Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, these signs shall follow them that believe. What signs? The signs that Jesus did 2,000 years ago. All you have to do is believe. Be a believer. The Bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe. And in my name, he shall cast out demons, speak in his tongue, and lay hands upon the sick, and it shall recover. God bless you. People can have a great day. Take night tonight. We have a good time. If you don't, if you know somebody that's not here, call them up on the phone. Tell them, come on down here. We got some great rappers. We got some hip hop. We got some testimonies. We got some food. We got a little bit of everything. Amen. Praise God.